So, uh, what is this application about? It's uh, about its uh, widget editor. So you can create your own widget on directly on your phone. You can share it with your friends, and uh, of course you can use it, and your friends can use it also. Here it is uh, shortly. You can uh, create the widgets from components, from clocks, weather, battery, phone state, shapes, and so on. And uh, you can do it anywhere when you have a time on toilet in public transport when your wife is talking. <laughs> <laughs> she probably will not like it, but it depends. Uh, you can share this design uh, over the internet. Uh, I, will sh I will show it uh, during the presentation. And the application is targeted to uh, ordinary Android users, not to geeks. I, I'm trying. So now I will show that application. Application is uh, available for both uh, phones and tablets. So it works on so small phone and also on, on tablet. You can see that there's, there is a lot of differences uh, in size, uh, but there is almost no differences in code. So the application uh, has uh, two most important parts. First is designs editor, where you can Select the size of the widget, like this. You can take some components like clock, analog or digital, it depends on you. You can, uh, you can make it bigger if you want. You can select colors if you like, red one. You can, select, you can put there uh, digital clock also, flavors of the clock. You can select various fonts, fonts and sizes and so on. And this is the way how you can you can create your own widget. Uh, I already have some some digits here preset. So you can see that there is a lot of them. I have various various uh, sizes and and look and so on. So if you create this this widget you can put it to your home screen, you can see here are some some examples. Uh, this one is uh, four four icons wide and two icons tall. This is the same. Th these are two two uh, times two. These are one one time one, and so on. So these are widgets. And uh, second important part of the application is uh, is web gallery. Fortunately, we have. Uh, Internet connection is probably nicer to have it here, and you can you can select any any of the widgets. Here is something like a plus one. It's it's not Google's plus one. It, it's my own. <laughs> yeah, because I'm not sure about the copyright and, and other stuff. I don't want to to be sued by by Google. So it's it's like plus one. You can download it to to your phone. You can share it. So if you want, you can sent to send it by email and every design has uh, URL like this you can see here it's HTTP R M I C difficult URL but if you if you send it to me you can later open it directly from the email I will show it Francis iPad are smiling, but <laughs> I don't care. Let's save it as, as draft. It, it's possible to, to save it from draft also. So, uh, so I show shown you the web gallery, and uh, here is possible to filter. Probably not, not, not network connection is probably done. So I don't have Wi-Fi connection, sorry. Uh, no. So it's 
probably everything I, I can show you because uh, in, in case that the application is not connected to the network, I can show you the, the design sharing. But uh, that's it. Right. So Thank you very much. Here's a couple of interesting little tricks there. Once you've created the widget, once you've created the widget using the editor, and you've created a widget that is a certain size, say four uh, by two. Uh, can I repeat again the question? Once you've created a widget using yeah. your editor, yeah. How do you add that widget into the uh, widgets menu for selection for the user? That, that's I can show it. So, uh, you go to, to the place where you want to put it, uh, select uh, widgets, find, mm -hmm. find appropriate size. Uh, for, the two, for example, there's... Uh, crazy. Clever, I see. So you have all the widget sizes listed out? Yes. And when you choose one, it gives you all the options for that? That size. Yes, yeah, so you can you can select it here, and you, you have you have the preview of the design here. You have okay, all the different ones that will fit. Yes. This space. Yes, you can assign on-click actions. So in case that you click click on the widget, you can either refresh, forecast, start some different application, do nothing, and so on. Nice. So so that's what what you can do on on click. And if you click on save and close, then the widget is. Pretty slow, so easier. Fantastic. So it's allowing users to create their own widgets for Android on an Android device. Yes. With clocks and weather. Uh, what were the other time, weather? Uh, I can show you in the editor. Uh, there is, uh, there are. Um, if you put on add, you can. Uh, <coughs> ele Shapes elements are, are uh, of clock type, so so hours, minutes. Uh, you can also use hours as arc, so so it's like percentage of of the day. It's difficult to see. I'll make it bigger. There's a lot of options. Yes. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of make options. Make what you want. This is nice. And you can add battery level in there as well. Did I see? So can repeat again. You can add battery level in there as well. Yes. Exactly. There is uh, again uh, battery, so so you, you can see capacity, voltage, temperature, uh, percentage as. Did you choose the top one? Did you choose capacity? Yes. This is the number. Format. Yeah. You can. Uh, here are also this cool. This is the cool stuff, so we can use. Roman numbers is we are really very football. Or text. Uh, it, it depends on your preference. How long have you spent making this application? Uh, how long time it takes to yeah. program it? With all these options. Uh, I don't know because it was my hobby project I started last uh, last Christmas. Mm -hmm. And till June I was working as hobbyist, so during the yeah. night during the public transport. And uh, now I went pro, and since uh, July, I'm I'm working on it. It's not the only program I'm working on it, but but this is currently my my main application. Uh, I maybe if you, if you are interested, I have a few a few more slides here. Uh, <laughs> just just a little. Do the worry. slides have the phone UI for the editor on them? <laughs> no, no, my wife is really untechnical, so so she is she is not. Not using a smartphone, she's using a really old Nokia phone, feature phone. Uh, what is nice on this application, on this application is uh, is social aspect because uh, people are uh, uh, are donating much more time than I do because mm -hmm. I have uh, hundred maybe thousand I'm not sure hundred users and they are. Working on it much more hours. Mm -hmm. I'm working about 40 hours per week, and I'm sure they, they spend much more time. I can show you some some interesting designs like like Bender. Uh, I'm not sure where we are not connected, so I can show it on, on my phone. Maybe. Uh, they created the application uh, has just very limited number of elements you can do. There are lines, circles, and so on, and they are they are doing really, really amazing amazing uh, creations. 
Can we somehow start the network? I, I, will try, I will try to look at it on my mm -hmm. phone. Uh, they, they are doing crazy designs and they have to spend very really long time on, the, on these designs. So maybe, maybe later. While you're looking through that, I guess my initial feedback for this would be there's a lot of functionality in this application, right? A lot of functionality that probably some of it you're the only person who knows how to flow through this application and find these details and uh, make the, the clock and the lines and everything all in one. So definitely consider at the start either having some kind of tutorial or some kind of guide showing users how to make the most of your application. This is, this is here. Here are two YouTube videos. Perfect. So, 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 so you can see how, how to work with it. But generally the layout of it is very nice. I, I would be interested to see how um, the, you've done the action bar and the buttons at the bottom on the, the phone as well. But yes. Do you have any uh, comments, Nick? Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, like I said, I think it's a really cool application. There's a lot of functionality in there. I think that's great, but I think you're at danger of being too much information on the screen. I, I'd like to see some more kind of progressive revealing, so only show options if they're relevant. Like, for example, when you were picking all the widgets, yeah. so you had every single size list, listed out. Uh, what I think would be better would only to list out the size if you've already created a template in that, in that size. So it's possible programmatically to, to add sizes into a list of widgets? Yeah, so in your manifest you declare each size uh, type widget, yeah? yeah yes, but in and then the using the uh, package manager you disable the component if they haven't created a template of that size. So that if I just go in there for the first time and I just create one you know, two by two widget, when I go to the home screen and add one, there's not, you know, 16 different sizes. It's just the one that I know I just created. I think that would be... Okay, uh, so, so it's possible because I told that it's statically written in an Android manifest XML file. Mm -hmm. So you declare the term of component in the manifest file, but then using package manager, you can set component enabled equals false to okay. disable the component, then it won't show up. And in which time? In the time when application is created? Yeah. Okay, okay. That, that's, that's very good. Uh, I really appreciate it. So yeah, so you're not overwhelming the user the first time they use it. It's like, you know, well, you know which one is it? I can't remember what size I created. If there's just one option, it would be a bit friendly, I think. That's awesome, awesome point. But yeah. a lot from which version it works? Uh, 1.0, I think, package manager. 1.6? It's 1. possible 0. to update the... Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, generally I think there's a lot to like. I mean, I like the layout for you, as you showed, you're running on a phone and running on a tablet. Even with, here in landscape, you've got it, you know, one way and then in portrait another way. I mean, you've done, obviously you've done a long time working on it, and I think you've done a good job, so. Yeah, personally, I don't like it very much. No, no I'm joking. Because uh, I've, I've got a battery widget in the market, and this is much better than mine. So. <laughs> I already lost enough users to your battery gauge, yeah. and now with this as well. Yeah. I, uh, what hope have I got? Keep you guys apart. But if everyone remembers this, at the end we're going to be voting for our favourite application, so try and keep the, the editor, the widget editor, in memory. Thank you very much, Thomas. Thank you. Okay, so actually, we should be giving him something. Maybe we'll do that at the end. So, who, are, who else would like to get the application reviewed today? I know that one person put their hand up earlier. Yeah. Justin, there are uh, no other person. You don't have to have mm -hmm. slides or anything like that. You can just come and talk. He was yeah, definitely able to prepare. My prefer. application is pretty lame. I'm a beginner and I don't want to. That's perfect. We'll give you feedback and then you can make it awesome. <laughs> yeah, why not? Why not? So, what's your name? Um, my name is uh, Simon. Mm -hmm. um, I studied high school and I started to develop. Uh, oh, <laughs> I started to develop uh, uh, Android applications uh, one month ago, two months ago. I don't know. And uh, I decided to make an uh, application which is called uh, Slovenkoid because uh, I quite often use um, uh, web dictionary Slovenik.cz but their, their web interface is not uh, quite uh, good for m mobile users. So I decided to, to simplify the way I, I use this dictionary. So I have created the application that, uh, that sends a query to the Slovenik CZ and, uh, and then uh, parse the, the response of, of the dictionary and format it uh, to, to show me the translation. And also, I added the uh, possibility to use a uh, Google Translate for um, checking the, the translation. 
So uh, here's a little preview. For example, oh, where's the keyboard? Oh, here. Uh, I write uh, dot in check. Select Slovenic CZ and submit it. And here I get a response from Slovenic CZ and and you can see the translation. And as well, I can use uh, Google Translate dot just to to see the query in another language. So that's all. And uh, I had a problem with um, with a response of, of the of the Slovenic says that uh, how to show it to the user because um, I got some string I parsed it and formatted it to HTML and then showed it and I don't know if it, if it is the best way to to show this. And for example, I don't know the layout if it is yeah. good. Um, and uh, I think I I didn't know know uh, uh, how to uh, what to add to the menu of the application. So I just added this this simple button to to write my application. I think I can use it better, but I I had uh, no idea how to use it. So that's all. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, it's a great start, you know, obviously some handy functionality. I think the best apps you write are the ones that you need yourself, because then you're passionate about it and it fulfills the use case. Um, so yeah, it's a good start. I think there's a lot you can do with the application. I think my first tip would be to, you know, if you wanted to take it to the next level, is to work with a designer. <laughs> and um, they might have some thoughts about, you know, changing look and feel. So one thing you could immediately do is perhaps use the action bar pattern. You see, have you seen the action bar? You might have caught my talk earlier today. but. Um, you know, immediately you'll give it more of a professional look and feel. Any app which just has the, you know, the default kind of title bar in here just looks pretty lame, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot you can do with styling it to make it look a little bit better. Um, I was also thinking about a widget. I was thinking about the kind of translation thing. You often, the use cases is probably someone's out and about and you quickly want to translate your word. So rather than having to like jump to, um, you know, find the app, launch the app, click in the text box, do it. If you had a widget on your home screen, which, you know, hitting that went straight and, into it. Uh, do you think that is, uh, that is uh, good to have a widget uh, with some uh, text, text field? Uh, I, I, I entered the query, submitted, and, and the response I will show in the application or in the widget? Yeah, I, so I'd say, yeah, for, so have a pop-up dialog for when you hit the widget uh, to enter the text, because you can't enter directly into it, uh, and then take you to the application for the answer. No, okay. That would be good. Okay. Um, there's other, obviously lots of other extensions you could do as well, so using uh, maybe text-to-speech if you wanted to mm -hmm. read, read out the word to you, uh, it would be fun, some kind of like a memory of the last languages you used, yeah. but um, yeah, so I think it's this one that we're Yeah, so this is obviously like very, very small, mm -hmm. so you know, there's nothing the user can do from this screen here, so you might think about once they've translated it, do they want to then like copy it to the clipboard? or um, you know, share it or something. Is there some action they want to take from it? So I'd perhaps make them slightly larger so you can interact with it and let them act upon it. So once they put the effort into using mm -hmm. your application, give them a reward of something else they can do with it as well as the translation. So, that's cool. Any other comments from the crowd? Oh. Suggestions? Help them along his way? Probably put some, some picture there to, to make it uh, nicer. Because there is a lot of empty space on the screen. So yeah. so the designers. Definitely. and just come to my mind to step here and show it my application. It's still in development, it's not finished, it has some bugs, and, but I will, hopefully I will get some useful, I believe I will get some useful feedback. So, here it is. It's an application for watching your stocks. 
uh, and not only your stocks, but, uh, but the world stocks. So, first of all, here's the dashboard screen. It's root um, for the application. You've got some uh, chart here. The, you can select the chart to show here. For uh, you can show us some of your favorite stocks or a world index in the index. So, for example, let's see how is Nasdaq doing today. So today it looks not good. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see for a long term. Well, in one year it's also not so good. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, the application here's first part. It's all stocks from so far. It supports only Prague Stock Exchange and uh, Germany Stock Exchange. So here are listed all, all companies you can trade in Prague Stock Exchange. You can see their names and ticker and their current uh, values and changes. Let's pick some interesting one. For example, my favorite Kit Digital. So here we can see some more data about Kit Digital. So today they are slightly down. We can see their chart for the whole year. Okay, today it's well, little, oh, not so moving. Anyway, let's go back. Next part here we can see the Germany, Germany companies from DAX index. It's the same, same way. For example, Volkswagen or oh, Okay. Um, so these are, here are these two two options: Prague Stock Exchange and German Stock Exchange. Okay. Next option is uh, next feature is uh, portfolio. User can pick her, his stock. Or her and add it to portfolio. Portfolio is divided to check crowns and uh, euro. Euro is for Japanese stocks and crowns for Czech stocks, obviously. Oh, thank you. So user can pick a stock and add it. Uh, my key digital. Okay. And here we go. Here's some sum and uh, change for whole portfolio. Also, okay, if we go to stock detail, you can add it from here. Let's say I've got a thousand pieces. Okay. okay, here we go. So this portfolio. Okay, next is uh, world in indices. Here are listed the main indices from uh, Austrian to Hungarian, Czech, US indices like Nasdaq and Dow Jones, Russian and all, all, all others. So we can see the same as in the stocks, also the chart. And, uh, and the last is market news so far with uh, one RSS feed, RSS feed. So you can see news, pick some and wait for it. <laughs> damn it. <laughs> God damn it. Anyway, it will, as I, as, as I say, it's uh, in development, some, obviously some bug here. So, oh, here we go, finally. You can read the news and and I think I'm done. <laughs> I'm glad the uh, I'm glad the design patterns that we were pushing or Roman was here pushing last year are coming through. I can see the the dashboard bringing content. Hey, can you put the phone back on there? Yeah. The dashboard where you've got only a few options. 
And then at the bottom, you've used all the extra space to bring something onto the home page is really nice. And then the, the action bar across the top clearly as well. Were you using the view pager? Or is it a customer? Yes, it's the view pager. It was the view pager. If people don't know about can you go back to the, the news section? Sure. And then inside an article? Hopefully everybody knows about this in Android now, but the, the view pager was released a few months ago in the compatibility library. And it means that you can do these nicely swiping views, either full fragments or things like this, without um, having to worry. People before used to use the gallery view, and they tried to track their finger, and the gallery would flip 20 screens off to the left or 20 screens to the right, and the view page helped replace that. And the, the little indicators across the top are quite nice as well. So yeah. these are all web views, I guess, web views inside a view pager? Uh, actually not, and maybe that's uh, my question I would like to ask. These are text views. Yeah. With uh, H HTML parsed in with, with the HTML files mm -hmm. that I don't have to use web views, but mm -hmm. right now I'm thinking that maybe I, I will I will use them because because there are uh, pictures inside, also maybe sometimes uh, YouTube uh, embedded, and uh, that's the reason. There be multiple text views on top of each other. No, so have the no, 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 only sizes. one text view. But you've got different font sizes inside. Yes, I used the uh, HTML class. It's something. No. Yes, it's spinnable object. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. It's HTML dot from from HTML or something. Like mm -hmm. that. Perfect. Very nice use. But it's it's it got one problem also that. Sometimes you can see the loading. It takes a while. I need to do it on uh, asynchronously to load load the content in. Parse the HTML. A little more comfortable with the if in the top left corner there's the action to get back to the home. If you click on where it says news, does it yes, it goes on. Very nice. Cool. Yeah. So you could have your little um, your logo up there the whole time, and then the, the type of the page across. But. Um, yeah, seems like a very nice functional application. Uh, a few comments as well. Like, um, so you noticed that I noticed that you were clicking on clicking this. Well, yeah, really? I need I need to revolve this. I know. Yeah, I mean, there's um, my my initial feedback was I looking at that I didn't realise you could click that. I mean, there's no um, affordance of pressing. There's no indication that you can press it. Um, one thing you can do is have the background change. So when I press it, like um, like you have for these items, you have the um, the touch feedback. So you see the background changes. You can do something changing, so an animated change mm -hmm. for the background using a drawable to, to indicate that. But you'd need something to indicate you can touch in the first place, I think. Uh, one thing I want to call out again with the view pager, these horizontal swipe, swipe, uh, swiping views are great, and I think we're going to see a lot more of them. A lot of the Google apps are starting to use it, like the new market and Google Docs and so on. Um, but the thing you have to remember if you're implementing it is to signal to the user that there is more content available to the sides. So I think you've done that well with this circle indicator at the top. Other ways to have some tabs or some kind of arrows or scroll bar that fades away. But um, yeah, bear that in mind if you're going to implement this kind of pattern in your um, application. And there was one other thing. I don't remember what it is. Actually, it's working on App Engine, so this error means I'm not online or App Engine's ah. is down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's what I was going to say. So the other thing was news. Like the first time you loaded the news, it took quite a while to load. Um, do you have like a some back? I don't know. It should be immediate. <coughs> so yeah, but you're pulling them down. When I hit the news button, you're then downloading the feed. It's actually the articles are stored in database, so I just show it from database, and in the meantime, I download the new content. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's cool. So that's what I can say is, um, you know, with Android, you're allowed to, you know, use the alarm manager to schedule tasks to run at a specific time. So it would be great if you know you set it to download, you know, once a day, twice a day, so that well, as soon as I come into the application. You know, it's already there. I don't have to hit the button and then wait for it to load and then see the stories. Uh, and what's great about doing that is it lets you do other things, like have a widget which displays the latest mm. stories and things like that. Uh, the other thing that I thought about for widgets again was the um, My Portfolio. So here you're letting a user customize your application and build up the stocks they care about. So if, if you're asking a user to invest their time in your application, it's great to kind of like reward them for that time and like surface that content wherever you can. So um, if you could do a couple of things, um, I was thinking maybe a widget again mm -hmm. to have on your home screen so you can quickly see these kind of information uh, would be great. And the other thing I thought maybe using the notification system. Actually, I use 
I use notifications. Okay. I've got uh, the stocks, uh, re the refresh of data is done automatically uh, thanks to Alarm Manager. So if there's new data, you can turn on notifications so it's available. Oh, I just stuck it. So it will take you, I just refresh it. So you can see the ticker, the notification message, and if I am somewhere else, so just go to the application. That's cool. Um, so yeah, using Alarm Manager and having it pop in the background is, is probably okay for news stories, which is like once or twice a day. But something like stocks, which are changing quite a lot, um, you probably don't want to be polling that often. So it sounds cool that you've already got an app engine back end. So if you could perhaps you know, watch for a percentage change, if it goes over a certain percentage change um, mm -hmm. in your back end, then you could use C2DM to send a push notification. Because mm -hmm. push notifications are always going to be much more battery friendly than polling. Mm -hmm. And you'll get a really like immediate, like, this stock is down. X percent. Mm -hmm. But they are, they are working since Android 2.2 or? 2.2 and above. 2.1? 2.2 and above for C2DM. Yeah. That's great. Any other Setting the logs. Any other <coughs> feedback or comments from the audience? Uh, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, what are you using for the chart? Okay, as you can see, the chart isn't ideal. The axes are losing and it's not good, so I am. I am drawing it into canvas by hand. There are a few um, third party libraries out there. Aren't yes, there? there are libraries you can use rather than, than draw it on your own. And is it, the other thing that would be nice is if it had like multi touch or not? Okay. <laughs> Zooming. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, maybe. Nice. Well, you can talk to the, um, you see the sleep bit guys out there showing their, their smooth scrolling graph. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That was very nice. <laughs> <laughs> no application for me, but nice. <laughs> Maybe they could make it open source. <laughs> yeah, go and ask them nicely. <laughs> okay, so I, I get one more uh, one more question. Do you like it? I mean the design, because because there was no graphic designer or anybody, only me. So I'm worried about how does this application look. It's definitely better than. <laughs> yeah, well done. Thank you. Any more volunteers? We've probably got time for one more. Yeah? Come on, let's bring that up. and my application is actually an app widget so uh, you will see widget locker and Uber music but these are not my apps uh, my is the widget uh, as it has been told the best apps should be those that I personally need so uh, my use case was that I started to use widget lock uh, started to use widget locker and I missed the feature to control my music from the lock screen. So uh, I figured out that I can actually make a widget that hides itself when there's no uh, there's no music playback. So as you can see now, there is nothing on the lock screen, just my weird unlock thing. And as soon as I play the music and show the lock screen again. Uh, there's my music control widget. This is the Chromeless team, just text, no graphics. And <laughs> I can actually control the music, skip through the song, stop it, change the volume, everything. And it uh, keeps shown there as long as I don't unlock it. So when I unlock it and go back again, it's gone, so I'm sure that I don't start the playback while the phone is in my pocket. I actually find out how to uh, <laughs> how to control a wide variety of of players. If you give me a while. So as you can see, there's really a lot of supported players. 
and it was quite difficult to find out how to control these and how to get the track info back and I even got this advanced compatibility mode here and uh, it uses the headset, uh, headset controls emulation so it works with most uh, unsupported players and it gets uh, back the information from scrolling data for simple as FM scrobler and things like that so I can actually control much more player than uh, you have seen there so, and <laughs> That's, that's a few teams. If you don't like the Chromeless one, there's even one that looks like uh, Windows. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's it. No, thank you. Yes. Nice use of technology, figuring out how to overlay a widget on top of the lock screen. Nice. Uh, that's not oh. really the technology, it's a widget locker, it supports widget on the lock screen. That's gotcha, okay. This application. So using a different lock screen yeah. application, which then you write. Mm. The technology uh, actually was how to hide the widget when there's no playback, and how to keep it displayed until <coughs> it's unlocked, mm -hmm. and how to control such a wide variety of, uh, of players because I don't have any API access to most of them. I had to figure it out <laughs> somehow. Nice. So I don't actually know about Widget Locker, but do you list your application in the Android market as a separate application? Yes. And then when you install it, if you don't have Widget Locker? You don't need it. You can put it on your desktop as well. It's just hmm. it's designed for Widget Locker, but you don't need it at all. Your application works as a normal widget as well? Yes. And then Widget Locker allows you to put any widget on your... Mm -hmm. oh. But it's not my application. No, 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 it's sure. Unfortunately. But, um, <laughs> do you recommend when people install your application they also use Widget Locker? Yes. Put it onto the home screen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, in the app, do you recommend it? Or in the description. Yeah. Yes, it's, it's told a few times in the description. And uh, I forgot to say there's actually an uh, application made by my friend. I don't know if he's here. He's not. <laughs> and you can use my widget to control your playback from web browser. If your phone is docked in a hi-fi system or something, you can mm -hmm. use your web browser to click through the songs and you don't have uh, to reach for the phone on the other side of the room. It's listening for IP controls for the... Uh uh, it uses uh, cloud to device messaging. Cool. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> Using the current uh, session you're logged in with in your browser? Excuse so it uses the Gmail session from the browser that you're logged in with? Uh, it actually generates a link from the registration ID mm -hmm. and uh, it just shows it to you, so you put the shortened URL from to goo.gl <laughs> and put it in your browser and you control your specific device ID. Very nice. So thanks very much. Um, one thing I'd say is um, it's, a, it's a very, I guess kind of niche, but very nice <laughs> uh, as well. One thing is um, you're perhaps in danger of having too much information on screen again, so that when you're showing the vast list of players installed, it, user might not care about that, so one thing you might think about doing is querying what you know, players are installed, because you know the package manager, package's mm -hmm. names you support, and you know just showing the ones for the ones installed already, and the compatibility mode, because it's quite daunting at the moment when you see group, the, you? The, the vast <laughs> list of stuff. I think, you know, we're all programmers here, right, I'm very much a programmer at heart, it's like sometimes you want to scream, look at this great functionality I've, I've written, that, you know, it can do all of this. But I think sometimes we have to rein ourselves in and think, you know, no, well, how, you know, how is someone going to use this, and what's the easiest way for them to use it? So maybe mm -hmm. like show less. Mm -hmm. uh, the configuration screen is quite complicated and full of yeah. data. Hmm. So, but thank you very much. It's very cool. So those are well. I think we're running out of time. I think we've got time to. Easy yeah, go on. I was going to say, uh, if anyone has, hasn't had time or a bit shy to reach out and ask for feedback, then um, we'll, sh we'll put our contact details online again, so feel free to reach out to us on Google+, Twitter, or however you want, uh, for feedback, and we'll, you know, we'd love to help you kind of make your apps better. So, hello? <laughs> So lastly, this is, um, uh, I think you've heard us a couple of times saying work with a designer, work with a designer. Um, it kind of really does help if you want to take your app up from that kind of hobby level up to a kind of real pro level. And Rich has just found out firsthand um, 
how this process can work. So um, as you might know, Rich has an application in the market called the Ultimate Stopwatch, with millions of downloads, and it's a you know stopwatch application. And it looks like okay. So it looks like this. It looks like that on a phone. <coughs> so I recently got. I'll turn this one off. I recently got some feedback from um, from a user of the application who's a, a UI designer and UX designer in Berlin. And we were doing an Android developer lab out in Berlin, and she was asking for uh, any good stopwatch, uh, watch apps she could use uh, in the kitchen. And I was like, I have a stopwatch app. Mine's fine. You can use that. And she took a look at it, and there were a lot of things, even though I thought I'd done a reasonable job of designing it. There were a lot of things she thought that we could do better, so she gave some feedback. So this is my original stopwatch app here. It's got some text on the screen here that says touch watch to start, uh, numbers at the bottom, a clock face, which I got from my stock image. So I, I stock photo, I paid for that there, and got a nice clock face. But uh, the kind of things that a UI designer did when they saw this application, one of the menu items in here is to go from stopwatch to countdown clock. And that isn't immediately obvious. So here, she's redesigned it. First of all, this is the stopwatch mode now, where the clock's a bit shinier. And she's done um, here in the middle a little brand for the ultimate stopwatch, which is reflected down here as well, just to give the whole thing some identity. Also, moving the lap times off the bottom, whereas here I had them kind of all squished up, lap times here onto a separate screen where you can have favorite lap times and you can use a view pager to swipe between these two screens. And then the touch watch thing here only appears the first time and it fades away now. So it's not a waste of real estate. The whole thing looks a lot uh, cleaner on the screen. And then one of the nicest touches I thought was now when you switch to countdown mode and it's counting down instead of stopwatch going up, she's changed the background to be black instead of white. So if you pick the, the clock up, the user immediately can tell if you're in stopwatch or countdown mode. And that, along with a little identifying brand and a little bit shinier, just makes the whole application feel that much more premium. It's that, uh, that feel of quality, you get that little extra half a star rating in the Android market, you move up the rankings a bit more, you get more installs. And that was just from um, a UI designer taking a quick look at the application and saying, come on, you can do, you can do better than this, even though I thought I'd done all right. <laughs> so that's the, the ultimate stopwatch, and um, the kind of feedback you can get. So the next and the final thing will be to get the, the four people whose applications we reviewed back up on stage again, so the audience can vote on which was their favorite application of the day. So if you could all please come back up. Right here, and the music widget. So we got the uh, the, wi the widget editor. We got the widget editor uh, from the start. Very functional. Allows users on Android to create their own widgets with battery information, weather, clocks, all these different things. Works on honeycomb, or works on tablets, and works on phones. We've got the translator. Not just allowing you to use Google Translate service, but another one as well. But, uh, I didn't understand the name of it, <laughs> but fantastic. Great to see um, students uh, coming out and uh, using Android, figuring out how to use the SDK and making their applications. Music lock screen, or music widget for controlling, interestingly, manages to control many, many different music players on Android. And finally, the, the stock checker. All that functionality, and we hope you add alerts to it as well in the future so that I get alerted when my stocks go, either way. Okay, so at the start, hands up if you think the uh, edit widget picker should win. That wasn't my hand, that was just saying to your hands up. Okay, are you proceed? <laughs> That's what you were laughing at, okay, <laughs> interesting. All right, and the, the translator, some votes for someone starting out in Android development. I think that deserves a hand, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's functional, it's what people need. 
Uh, being able to play and pause your music on any of the Android players from your lock screen. <coughs> nice. I think it's a good use of technology. I can imagine it took quite a lot of um, figuring out how to, to sort of those players and the scrubbling and things out, a lot of detailed work. And finally, the stock checker. <coughs> Who needs to know about their stocks? Wow. Good, good set of um, hands up for everyone. But I think the clear winner was, mainly because two of the panel voted for it, <laughs> the clear winner here was the uh, editing of your widgets on Android and making things. So you just get the first choice of the prizes. So what we have for you is an Android doll, an Android collectible, and an Android hat. <laughs> Thank you very much. Which one was second place? I think it was in the stock checker. Stock checker. Which you get one of the three. Which one would you like to choose? Oh, I like the doll. You like the doll? <laughs> I want this. You get the Android hat. Thank you very much for being brave enough to come over. <laughs>